Hey, so in this, this video, actually, <clears throat> it's going to wind up being a pretty long <laughs> video. Um, so what I've done to try to help out some of the viewers, so, you know, who's, who's got, how many people have an hour on their hands to, to, you know, to sit through a bunch of banging and talking about, you know, where, where the work needs to be done and all that kind of stuff. So what I've done is, uh, I've broken this video down into segments or chapters that you can see if you mouse over the, you, know, you mouse over the timeline on the bottom of the video and mouse across, you can see the chapters and the chapter names, that kind of thing. So that'll help you out. But what I've done is broken it up so that, um, so, so that you can, if you want to see, say like what I'm calling the bang time, which is, you know, you know the time in the video where I'm actually doing uh, the hammering and the reshaping. And then the other segments are, for stuff like, um, you know, checking my work, um, using the templates to see how the profile looks now, um, taking some measurements and just generally seeing what the progress is and what still needs to be done and, you know, how I'm going to do it. Um, so hopefully that, uh, that helps you out so you don't have to sit through an entire, I don't know, maybe hour long video. Uh, anyways, so you can see, you know, where it came from and, you know, where it's going to when the job is all done. Hey, welcome back. Uh, I got to compensate for my forgetfulness here. Um, so I'm going to do something here that my dad, uh, used to do. Uh, I forgot my tap set, uh, at home. I brought it home to do something else with it. Uh, but anyways. <clears throat> so I'm going to improvise and I'll show you exactly what that is. I need to, uh, clean up some, uh, clean up some threads before, you know, I, I continue with today's work. So what I'm going to do here is let's put on the safety goggles. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, um, cut some slots in this 516 quartz bolt. This is a, a stainless steel bolt too. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's harder than regular steel. So let's move the camera in a little closer. Hopefully I don't burn the lens with uh, sparks and uh, I'm going to cut a groove in here. Now, back in the day, my dad used to do this with a hacksaw and they, they worked fairly well. So I'm going to give it a shot with the, um, the cutoff wheel. Okay. So now, is that hot? Now I want to turn it because I want to cut uh, more. Let's see, that was uh, one, two. Actually, I'm going to put it right here. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to cut three of them. There we go. Now we'll clean up any burrs. That I might have created. Um, I was cutting that and provided it's not too hot let's take it off and take a look at it so there we have you know some uh some sharp corners at the ends of each of the threads and we're going to use that just to just to do thread cleanup before i start putting some things together so let's go check it out okay so returning back to the filler panel to fender bolts where we left off last week uh, I'm gonna just turn this in the, the factory 516 course so I'm just gonna turn that in see what it feels like it's kind of tight 
I can turn it, but the further in I go, I may wind up having problems with it. I don't wanna, don't wanna twist the sheet metal any more than it is. So let's take our uh, newly created cap and turn it in there <clears throat> until it starts to get tough. And then I'm gonna put a ratchet and a socket on it. But it looks like it, it looks like it's, it's going in uh, all the way pretty easily. So might not have been that bad. I'm gonna turn it out, remove it, and then we'll retry our bolt and see what we got. Okay, now blow the dust out of it. <clears throat> Let's turn it and see what we got now. goes in super easy okay so th this isn't something that you're gonna probably not gonna be able to fix damage threads with but you know you can do cleanup on existing threads like you know maybe they just have a little bit of rust in them or something so I'm gonna continue with this so now with our tension bracket put in place we can see that it's actually <laughs> it's actually got, got an upwards incline uh, towards the front and that's not what we want because on the end of the the filler panel, um, the you can see that the bolt holes are, you know, perpendicular to the ground. Uh, so what's happened here in the collision is, you know, this got this got pushed in at the top, and if we look at the um, other side, here, um, this is where this line right here. This is the edge of the bumper as the bumper was you know, pushed up and into the fender. So uh, naturally it's been pushed back up here at the top. It's uh, bulged out right here. That's what we got to work in. And it's even twisted up right here, whereas it's actually a bit higher up uh, here than it is right there. So this whole thing needs to come this way. And uh, that's what we're going to work on. So now I'm going to show you, you know, how I, how I set all that up and it's nothing fancy. If you take a look here, you'll see that, you know, I've got the bracket in place and what I've done is uh, just use a piece of chain because it's easily adjustable for length. And rather than using the come along, I decided to use the um, uh, ratchet strap. <clears throat> got a little more, a little, little finer adjustment on that. And it's fastened to nothing but uh, a plank behind the wheels on you know, this, uh, this 39 Chevy and, uh, the Bel Air. So it doesn't need, it doesn't need a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of tension on it. Just a slight amount until I saw that, you know, it was putting a little bit of pull on the fender right here. And that's all that took. So now we're going to get started. So to begin with, uh, I'm going to sand the high spots so that I can easily identify you know, where I'm going to be doing the work. And this is nothing more than a sponge sanding block. That's all it is. I don't need, uh, don't need anything fancy right now. And there, and I can see that it's bulged out along here. So really all I'm doing is just, uh, I think this car used to originally be blue. So it's bringing out the blue. There we are. Okay, that's the area that I'm going to be working on, as well as inside here. But inside here, I'm going to be work, actually working from the inside of the fender. That's going to be a little challenging because it's kind of a tight space in there. But uh, let's uh, let's get going on it. Now I'm going to be uh, using my heat gun. I want to warm the whole area up. Good enough. <clears throat> All right. Now, so I'm going to take my, uh, oh, you know what I almost forgot? Ah, almost forgot. My earplugs. All right. Stick those in. Because this is undoubtedly going to be loud. And of course, my wife is in there watching TV. She's going to come out. <laughs> Wondering what's going on, but 
you know, I'll, I'll just surprise her. Okay. <laughs> There we go. Let's see if I can sit in here. Uh, there we go. All right. Now, put uh, yep. Put the dolly in behind. better already I can tell from the backside of course everything's falling off the top of the fender too I think I'm gonna work on uh, work on it from the back side here. Uh, let me move the camera and see if we can capture that. Now that ridge that I was talking about where the edge of the fender came up under here, I've sanded it a bit just to make it a little clearer. And you can see that it's a rather a rather sharp crease right there. So I'm gonna warm this up. And then we're gonna, we're gonna hit it from the inside now. <laughs> I'm no southpaw, so, all right, good enough. Now, I'm gonna use the heel dolly, because the heel dolly happens to fit nicely inside that curve right there. And, uh, of course, you know the usual, the hammer. So, let's go. It's, it's working. It's just uh, trying to be a little more careful with it. I don't want to create a bunch of dimples that I need to try to work out. Yeah, it's coming up. Now, notice here too that this is starting to become more vertical. What I did uh, between camera takes was I had to tighten the ratchet strap once more because I saw that it was starting to, you know, starting to come down here and, and pull back in the top. So we're getting there. a little bulge on the outside right there that needs to come that needs to come back in so I'm going to do that now overall it's getting better we're getting pretty close to vertical right here So let's see where about it. Now, yeah, that's coming. Okay, now come back, uh, back inside. actually looking and it feels a lot better too the, the ridge isn't so pronounced
strike the ridge, I'm feeling more of the strike on the, the, the back of the, he the heel dolly too, so it's doing much better. There's that spot right there that is, it's a little bit of a, a dimple on the outside and a bump on the inside. So I'm gonna have to try to, uh, to get that. I'm not gonna expect perfection. Yeah, it's a little better. That might be something that I might just have to fix with uh, filler. It's it's pretty fine. Now, if we look at this, it's almost there. It's it's almost vertical. So you know, now might be a good time to see how the filler panel lines up. But um, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to take this off. And I'm gonna try my uh, uh, try my my templates, the gauges I made last weekend, and see you know how much more work I need to do here. I know I need to do more work, but I just want to know you know how much further it needs to go. All right, so now we take uh, our lower gauge and put it in place, and you can see that we're 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 pretty much okay along the full length of this, except that we've got. Uh, we've got a bit of uh, uh, a, a space right here where it needs to come forward just a little bit. And then we take the next uh, gauge, which we use an inch and a half up from there. And we see that, uh, let's see, roughly inch and, a half, inch and a half, yeah. Okay, and we see that we've got a gap here. I don't know if you can see where the light is coming through there. Uh, but then we've got, uh, a considerable considerable gap right here. I don't think we really gained much with what we were doing there. We were just sort of taking the creases out of it because this needs to come forward uh, <laughs> nearly half an inch. And then, so this one is four and a half inches up and it goes oh, right here, this hole right here. And Hole. This one. There we go. So you can see, like, uh, we've got um, a bulge right here, which is creating a gap back here and up front. So this this still needs to go down quite a bit. I think we've taken the worst of the crease out of it, but now we've got to work a larger area to push it down. So now it looks like. I've got the worst of the crease out right here and this one right here where the edge of the fender came up. Um, but I still, I've still i still got a wider area that needs some work. So what I wanna do is lower this a bit and work this a little more to, you know, to start bringing things forward. And I still have the tension on here. So that's gonna, that's gonna help. So let me get in position. So, warm this up a little bit. Sandwiching contact between, say, like between the, uh, you know, the, the sheet metal itself and the hammer. I don't want that. I want to try to uh, hit slightly offside, so I'm pushing the metal back rather than sandwiching it between the hammer and the dolly because I don't want to stretch it. Uh, it's just going to make matters worse. So, here we are. Side. Let's see. Yeah, it's got getting there. Bit of a bowl. 
hold right here. Of course, it, it looks like there's a bit of a fold right there too. It's not, uh, uh, it's not you know, like a smooth rounded contour. It's come out a bit. Well, we're probably about three eighths of an inch more to go to, you know, to bring this forward. So uh, I might want to put a little more tension on this. It feels like the chain is relaxed. So I'll do that. by the way are almost vertical so we're getting there that feels better still this this is still a bit strong right here it needs to be more rounded here are almost vertical. So we're doing good. We still need to come forward a bit. Yeah. Yep. Still, but mind you, not as much. I think we're looking at maybe a quarter inch now. So, you know, we're getting there. And these bolt holes are, if they're not vertical, they're pretty close. So, let's massage it a bit more. Now, in a space like this, um, I kind of need a hammerhead that's a little more rounded. Uh, let me see what I got here. Yeah, this one's a little more rounded. 
because I'm working an inside curve. Still got a divot right there. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. That's a difficult spot to get from the inside. All right. Let's check it again. One more time. That's the wrong one. No, oh, I dropped it. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, right there. Uh, actually, I'm wrong. It's a little more than a quarter of an inch. Um, we've got, well, see, now I need to trim some off the end of this um, so that we can, uh, it looks like, uh, it's butting up against this and not allowing me to um, uh, put it all the way in. So let's trim a little bit off this. Let's see what that does for us. Okay. That's better. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So this actually... We've closed this gap here a bit. We still need to come out front here a bit more. I think we're looking at, oh, no, actually I'm right. It was, was a quarter of an inch. All right, so let me, uh, I'm gonna work this broader area a little bit more and see if we can recover a little more push forward. For those of you who uh, are wondering, I'm actually working the dolly off of the off the side side of the hammer, right? So the dolly's over here, and then when I'm down here, the dolly's back here. down like this I could feel the change in the curvature so like when I'm down low and I come up I could feel where it starts to climb and it's fairly consistently along a line like this right so now if I feel right here I still feel there's a high spot right there that needs to come down Yeah, 
works a little better, but not quite. Feels a little more gradual now. I don't want to overdo it. It looks like our bolt holes back here are vertical now, so we're getting pretty close. Um, I'd be inclined to uh, uh, check the gauges on this once more and see what we got up here with our uh, our four and a half inch gauge. Pardon me, our template that we're going to use roughly four and a half inches up. So let's check or four and a quarter, I think it was. No, this hole right here. Well, that's not bad. We've, yeah, this has come down quite a bit, so we don't have near the gap back here that we had before. And uh, the gap right here, just before the bend, uh, significantly less too. So that tells me that it's going down, needs to go down a little more right in this area here. Sergeant, some I'm not really putting a lot of strike in the hammer, it's almost kind of just bouncing off the metal. Um, I'm not hitting it extremely hard. More or less just swinging it. All right. Well, let's check it again. Okay. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Is up. Okay, this is looking much better up front here. Uh, we still have some gap back here, which means I need to work this further back. All right, dolly and hammer. There, but up front here is looking really nice. That's that's following the curve really well. Um, I would suggest that uh, I just got to work a much wider area, very slightly. This whole thing right here. See this this right here is is almost perfect right now, right where right where it it, it the, the curve leading up to where it, it bends over to to the front that's that's almost perfect. Um, we still got a bit of a gap right here. I kind of wonder what the uh, now I didn't make I didn't do a contour 
a vertical contour. So now I'm starting to think that I should go back to the new fender and check that vertical contour right here because it may naturally be higher anyway. Um, so I might do that next. All right, so I've got a contour gauge, um, but it's not a very big one. It's one that I had you know, years ago for like doing some trim work and stuff like woodwork. But uh, what I'm gonna do here is do uh, a vertical contour check on that part of the uh, the front fender so I can compare with you know what's on my original fender so let's take a look so I'm going to set the contour gauge to flat and then I'm going to be roughly eh, two and a half inches from the front here and I want to just simply press that down like so and then I've got my you know my vertical contour that I can check on the uh, original fender Alrighty, so I got a I got a contour off the uh, the new fender, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at it. Um, so it, it, try to ignore the light over there because I know it's it's really a, it's really annoying, but I need it to be able to see where my where it's touching and where my gaps are. So what we see here is it looks like it's touching there still, so it's still too high right there. There isn't enough of a a curve in that, and it's it's creating a gap up here and that's pretty consistent um, all the way back yeah pretty much so I still got to work this area and get get that curve in there so I think we're gonna go with a piece of pipe to try to restore that curve and this is the same piece of pipe that I used uh, on the filler panel it's a, a good filler panel but I guess in shipping or something this had been bent up so I simply use this piece of pipe to uh, you know to fix that that spacing between there so we're going to use this uh, the same way uh, down here to fix that that curve okay, so now we're going to take this piece of pipe put it right here now you can see I've got a bright light behind the camera but I can see in you know what little gloss there is on this paint that uh, the curve pretty much starts right here and that's probably the case all the way down so even running my finger across this I can feel where the high spot is right there and that's probably what's uh, throwing things off so I'm just going to take uh, this piece of pipe put it right there and I can even see where you know, if I use the full length of the pipe um, I can see there's no gap like back here but I can see where the high spot is right there so I can see the light coming through there so we're just going to persuade it a bit oh, I think I hit the fender and not the pipe now before we get too carried away Let's check the, check the gauge. Ah, oh, that's better. But it's not consistently better if I slide it back and forth. There is a high spot right here that needs attention. Just right on, right on the other side of this paint line right there. slide back and forth now there's a bit of a hook oh I see it's the ridge underneath here that's uh, that is catching snagging on that's actually pretty good yeah that's better yeah yeah that's much better and that curve is fairly fairly uniform the entire way okay so anyways I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna try and perfect this just just yet because the thing is there's two fenders 
that that, that are involved in this uh, this alignment. You know where the the inner fender needs to fit between the two of them, and then once I get the other side done, then uh, I'm probably going to refine refine this side a bit and probably do some refinements on the other side to make sure everything's good but so far it looks like uh, the two bolt holes on the inside uh, are vertical now which is what we want so if we take uh, let's take a look at uh, the four inch uh, four inch one let's take a look at the bottom one follows that line. Well, I can't do that right now because this is in the way. Um, i take check that later. Um, the one that I do want, though, of course, is right on the floor right there. Let me get so, um, that's not bad. It still needs to come out a bit, but if I recall when I started this whole thing, um, there was a uh, like an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch gap there and right now it's right at about a quarter of an inch so but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to the game plan and I'm going to reserve uh, more tweaks on this after I get for after I get the other side uh, fixed so now we're on the passenger side you can see that uh, <laughs> this is considerably worse the other side was easy compared to this one uh, but what I'm gonna do is is uh, you know, try to straighten this out just very simply with pliers, maybe a hammer, and uh, clean up these bolt holes so that I can put my my pull bracket on there. Get that much done here uh, right now. Now this one is pushed. You can see it's, it's bent up right here. This is going to be interesting. this the way I did on the other side but we're gonna give it a shot and uh, now let me clean that up and we'll see if we can start fitting it all right so now you can see on the passenger side uh, the damage is more extensive and when I put this uh, uh, tension bracket on here you can see that they're they're nowhere near the vertical they should be. That they're they're not lined up vertically at all. But if we were to go over to that side, you can see that after working um, after working that side, that you know they're 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 vertical now. So that one's in much better shape. So the matter now is to uh, is to put some tension on this and start working out some of these creases. So we've got uh, you know a big crease here coming inside and then we've got another smaller one that's really tight this is actually where the uh, uh, bumper actually pressed up uh, pushed into the fender and we're talking about you know this section of the front bumper right there is what got pushed into the fender so that's actually left it with uh, uh, <laughs> a very sharp corner and then you know so we look on the outside and we see that, uh, you know, the big crease here, actually a big arc that goes up this way, you know, right up to that, right up to that body line is where it goes right up here. And, uh, so there's a, there's, there's a fair amount of work there. This is, th this is actually bent up right here too. So that needs to come down. Um, so, you know, I'm going to get to it. So looking at this, it looks like I'm probably going to get the most dramatic results initially if I work uh, this tight crease here and uh, this fold here uh, from the outside. So that's the that's the first approach on this. And I've got I've got tension on the on the bracket here on the chain, so we can uh, uh, see what kind of results we're going to get.
So that's pretty. Uh, <laughs> that's a pretty tight, uh, pretty tight bend there. Uh, yeah. Hit it some more. Okay, so now I think I gotta work, um, work this other one from the other side. here. going to take some back and forth so it's going to take a while oh we got slack in the chain okay let me tighten the chain a bit Got some good tension on there now. Time to get on the other side I'm gonna fix that so <clears throat> I came to the realization that I had missed a step which was the heat <laughs> and uh, found that the, the metal started moving much easier and so uh, I spent a little more time on it though so that I could get the uh, get it quite a bit hotter in fact I could start to smell the paint uh, it got it got that much warmer so I'm gonna continue with this all right now we continue and getting it hot makes a huge difference in fact it's so hot now I can't touch it <laughs> these sharp creases are coming out much easier slack on the chain although we're, we're we're still not still not vertical here with the two bolts so uh, I'm just going to continue banging away all right so now that this is <laughs> less mangled uh, although it's still mangled uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on straightening this so that I can get the uh, I get the tension the tensioner to sit uh, uh, more vertical right now because this is all bent up it's not sitting in there right and I want to correct that so it pulls it properly so uh, what I'm going to do is take uh, uh, take the comma, the comma uh, and
so. And this is bent out bit here. There we go. And uh, there's a piece right here that's, it looks like it's sticking out, and but in reality, this is, you know, this is pushed in right up here. So uh, I gotta see how I can take care of that. Maybe. Maybe if I just simply squeeze it with pliers, it'll come back to shape. Uh, that's better. Better, but not quite. Let me see what I can do here. Pliers best. Let's give that a shot. That's better. Better, but not quite perfect. kind of ridge right there that uh, I need to I need to lower it's sticking out a little too far you know, could, could be what needs to happen anyway. Uh, there we go. We're getting somewhere now. Okay. That's looking better. It's still a little caved in right here. That needs to come out. edge of that <laughs> the edge of that hole where the nut sits is uh, is protruding now let's get our <clears throat> comma behind that got kind of a strange curve to it like this that I got to work on and I think the issue there is the way the, the the bumper pushed it pushed up on it it also it also bent it in this way so I got to work on that too um, but that's probably gonna get fixed when I fix uh, the majority of this <clears throat> 